Bienvenue, vive la France, and this time avec vous, and today for 1000 Greatest Vinyl Videos we're going to be exploring three really good French artists. Now the first one up, it goes without saying, when you say France and music then this particular artist always comes up. This is Jean-Michel Jarre and uh, the album that I've picked today is Rendezvous. Now this isn't his most famous, I think that accolade probably goes to Oxygène, uh, but this was the first full-length uh, Jean-Michel Jarre album that I bought way, way back in the 1990s and uh, it really grabbed me. And the reason I went for this was because there was a compilation album doing the rounds. I think it was called Images, the best of Jean-Michel Jarre. And on that album, one of the tracks that really reached out to me was Second Rendezvous. So I went out, I tracked down this album and I picked it up secondhand, probably for only about a pound. But it, the rest of the album does not fail to deliver. Now, in keeping with Jean-Michel Jarre's usual numbering policy over um, the orchestral suites that um, he does, uh, all of these tracks, bar one, are uh, named First Rendezvous, Second Rendezvous, Third, Fourth, Fifth. The only exception to that is the final piece, uh, or last rendezvous, Ron's piece. Now, the reason for this was that originally um, the idea was that uh, Ron McNair, who was an astronaut uh, at NASA, was going to record the saxophone piece in this song in space on one of the su shuttle missions, and it was going to become the first recorded piece of music recorded in space that was then subsequently commercially released. Unfortunately, Ron McNair was one of the astronauts on the Challenger space shuttle, which uh, back in 1985-86 uh, exploded on takeoff. So, subsequently, the um, saxophone piece in this, this particular recording was recorded by another person, and the piece was dedicated to Ron McNair and the other six astronauts who died on the space shuttle Challenger. It's got very simplistic packaging. We've got the Michelle Granger front cover, which is basically a painting, and that is common to pretty much all of the uh, Jean-Michel Jarre albums. It's actually a globe, but the sea areas are transparent, so you can actually see inside the globe. It's quite an interesting uh, piece that rewards careful scrutiny. And uh, then we've got the, the cupped hands and the mouth, making it look as if you know, there's sort of like a calling out uh, face there. You know, a bit quirky, a bit weird, and that kind of goes to the territory with the Michelle Stranger uh, paintings. On the back we get this uh, rather rakish picture of Jean-Michel Jarre from the mid-80s there, and a little bit of information on the tracks. Not an awful lot, but when we look inside the packaging, um, there's no other information with this. we just got the plain slip case, and uh, the standard uh, Polydor Stroke uh, Disc Dreyfus uh, label information on the middle. The next album that I've picked is one which I bought in uh, the early 2000s based on one track and one track alone. And in my opinion, that track is epic enough to be able to carry this entire album. The group I've picked is Air, and the album is Talkie Walkie. Now, when you say air to most people, um, once you get past the usual joke, nitrogen, oxygen, ho, 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 um, they tend to, to suggest Moon Safari as the obvious album choice. Now, Moon Safari was available, probably still is available, on vinyl, but it's not the air album that I have on vinyl. This album, however, is one which is probably a little bit more unusual, but Cherry Blossom Girl is that track that really stood out for me. And actually, the rest of the album is pretty good as well, but that track does stand out head and shoulders above. It's, again, very simplistic packaging, and this kind of reflects uh, vinyl in the period where it was becoming collectible, but not quite, you know, hipster. So we've got them hedging their bets. We've got a standard uh, single-disc uh, album release. Front cover information, we've got almost like this sort of gay icon <laughs> pictures of the band there. Um, over a background of uh, mathematical formulae. On the back we have the track listing and more of this mathematical formulae uh, design. But on the inside we've got a heavy card uh, inner cover. Most of it is white but in the middle we've got a strip with a collage of photographs and this shows the band slightly less pretentious uh, and it's actually you know it's quite interesting to closely look at what appears to be photos from the recording sessions and we've also got uh, a bit of information on uh, 
And there's some lyrics on here. We've got some copyright information uh, and um, uh, very small information on the artists involved in the recording. It's an album that really it's the music that speaks for itself, not the packaging. Now, the final of this French trio that I've chosen is probably the most unusual group name to a lot of you. And this is M83. Now, if you said M83 to me before I come across this group, I'd say, hmm, that's funny. I don't remember there being an M83 motorway, but actually it's a, a French group, although they, they've now relocated to America and record from there. But it fits with our Vive la France uh, theme that we're going on for today. The front cover, we've got this kind of quirky picture that is quite common now with the sort of hipster indie groups. And uh, I would like to draw attention to the IKEA Expedit bookcase that they've got behind them there, which you probably notice is exactly the same as what my vinyl collection sits on behind me. And we've got this, uh, there's like um, some kind of goblin or gremlin mask there. We've got the cuddly toys. It's a real eclectic mix there, very weird. And then we've got these two girls, one in a fur coat, one in a, a sort of almost kimono style dress. Uh, the album's called Hurry Up, We're Dreaming. It's not the first album from 80, M83, and indeed it's neither is it the album that brought them to my attention, which was the soundtrack to Oblivion, which is a Tom Cruise film, which I watched, and it was a surprising film in that I've not heard of it, but I loved that film, and the music in particular really stood out to me, and it turned out it was all done by this group. Now, the soundtrack to that album, or to that film rather, is available on vinyl but it is very expensive. It's about £25, £30. And I thought, you know what? Do I look like a money tree? No. So I bought this, which is their second album, and it hasn't disappointed. And actually, uh, there's some tracks on this which I do recognise from being played on the radio. And you know how it is. You listen to music being played on the radio, and the DJ annoyingly does not tell you what it's called. And if you don't have one of those applications that sort of listens to it and then looks it up on the internet, you're left at a loss for knowing what a track is called. So it turned out that uh, one of the singles, Midnight City, was a track that I recognised from on the radio. And there's a few others that sound familiar. Now, on this particular package, you actually get an awful lot of music. There's, let's see, we've got 10, 20, 22 tracks um, on this by my reckoning. Now, that is an awful lot for any album. It comes across two discs. Uh, it's not gatefold, um, but um, we do have two heavy duty discs. And we've got a picture of the two girls from the front cover uh, there, artistically lit uh, on that side. And then when we turn it over, one of these gives uh, the uh, copyright and artist recording credits information on the album. But the other actually gives the lyrics, and what I noticed is actually not all of the tracks uh, have lyrics, some of them are instrumental, so obviously you only get the lyrics for the tracks which have lyrics. The quality of the discs, it's they're very heavy pressings actually, not the heaviest that I've come across, but certainly heavier than a lot of albums that were pressed in the 80s and 90s. And on the label side we've got a fairly blank B-side, and then on the A side of each of the albums, we've got the picture of the uh, the girls from the front covers. Now, there we have it. Three French artists uh, for three more well-deserving albums to go in our top 1,000 vinyl record list. I hope you've enjoyed this. Don't forget to like this video and share it too. And uh, you can also look back through the channel. Bloody bloody. Come on, you know this spiel. You could almost rap along with me. Subscribe to the channel and you'll be the first to know about new videos when they are. Actually, no, no, I should not be allowed to rap. Anyway, you take very good care of yourself. And this is me, Jenny Cake, saying bye for now. pleasant video wasn't it children and if you want to see another video of the cameo of little old me don't forget to go over to the knob mouse channel and watch the game hammer videos and watch out for me in a starring role <laughs>